So I wanted to make a little video that reviews my workflow for writing academic papers in NeoVim and to compare that workflow to some of what else is on offer, at least in beta version, for project management, um, whatever, whatever it is you may be working on. So in particular, um, there's, uh, let's start with Obsidian. So this is in beta, but you know, it's basically a collection of markdown files allows you to create wiki links between files and you know you can use tags and labels and so on and you know it has a little graphical representation and so on and and it comes with its own shell so it's its own program you know lives you know maybe you give it a workspace of its own on your computer and you know you can reference it um, you know through through your your work process um, there's also Rome research and these seem like they're sort of shooting for a similar target um, it's also in beta um, but they both have sort of communities behind them and a lot of enthusiasm about their, you know, excited about their development. Um, there's also Notion, which is a bit older and, um, you know, fairly sophisticated. You know, it's really for, I think, running a business and for having, you know, a lot of different people all uh, communicating with each other and, you know, provides a lot of basically admin support, um, creating databases and so on for tracking expenses or, you know, complex calendars, people's different schedules and so on. Um, and so there's a question of like, how much of this do I really need uh, for my own workflow? Because, you know, I don't basically less is more. Right. So one thing to think about is where do I want most of my time to be going? You know, I want to be spending as little time as possible doing admin or making sophisticated, you know, notes that I'm not going to care about in a year's time. Right. So where I want most of my time to be going is into this paper, into drafting this paper, into making it really good, something that will be worth looking back to in a year's time. Whereas, you know, inside here, I have my local to-do list. So this is all the different to-do stuff for this, for this paper. Um, I, you know, it doesn't make sense to spend a whole bunch of time making this, you know, really sophisticated or fancy, right? right? Like I could hyperlink all these different papers when you, you know, if I opened up the markdown file, I could, you know, space MP and, you know, preview this markdown, you know, so that these papers were hyperlinked so I can then click them and it would take me to the journal website. But like, I don't need that because I'm not in a year's time, I, I'm not going to want to look back to these notes. They're not going to be that valuable, right? So don't add value where it's not going to be appreciated later, basically. It's just a waste of time. So instead, this is minimal scaffolding, which I need to stay organized, to know what I need to do, what I need to read, you know, what changes I need to make. Um, where I'm at in sort of the, the high level process, right? This is all that I need and nothing else. Um, I do have a few other project files, so let's go into the Explorer here. So I have a scrap file, let's open this up. I don't have anything in the scrap file right now. Um, there's also, let's hop back in here, outline. I don't have anything in the outline yet, um, but nevertheless, you know, those, those are uh, some other tabs which I can move through. So if I need, uh, you know, other markdown documents, um, I can create them easily. The scrap is actually um, a tech document because I'm going to be cutting and pasting, um, you know, basically blocks of text, which I'm not quite ready to delete yet, but, you know, I, I've decided do not belong in the paper. So, so that's sort of my local workflow for a single project. Um, however, you know, it's worth mentioning that, you know, Obsidian and Rome and, and um, certainly Notion, these are not just about managing individual workflows. You know, for a given project, they're they're sort of more high level. They're your entire life and all the different workflows that you have going. So that is also useful, um, and it's something very easily reproduced inside Vim. So um, let's go. Um, so here is actually maybe let me quit out of this so you can just see. So if I open up NeoVim, so one of my projects here is to do. So let's open five. And so what this is, is it's my different workflow. So this one is philosophy, right? And again, I could preview this, though I basically never would. Um, so yeah, and this tells me, you know, what I have on, what all my different philosophy projects are. So I have these two R&Rs that I'm working on, um, different tasks related to them, and then these other um, new new projects, which I'm, I'm beginning to think about. So um, so yeah, let's, let's quit out of that. Um, so anyways, that's my philosophy sort of high level overview. And this is just a markdown file, pretty simple. Um, you know, there's also like job applications and then, you know, the different tools, which I've been creating little videos like this one um, to, to share some of the, the productivity tools, uh, which I've assembled for myself. And then, you know, my aspirations to, to rewrite my website. 
So, so anyways, these are the projects which I found it useful to create little markdown files. And you know, if we open the Explorer, this is all I've got so far. Um, I could add new new files here, um, or I could you know drop some of them into an old folder, discarded. Um, yeah. So, so this it's fairly minimal, you know. And of course, yes, I could do hyperlinking in here, and I could do tags, and I could do labels, and you know, all kinds of fancy things. But why? I mean, what am I really gaining from doing that? Like, do I need a graphical representation of all my different projects? Like, linking these? No, I mean, I don't need that. And to set it up, however simple that you might be able to pull that off inside a program like this, you know, you got to think, what am I producing? Will I be? Will I care about this in a year's time? And if not, why waste my time building any of these such things? So, so anyways, that that is um, those are my thoughts about using. Markdown in a limited capacity um, as a project that, you know, this this lives in this window here, number three, and, you know, it just sits in the background. Meanwhile, I have this other project, Logic and Religion, open, and I have this Identity About newspaper open. So, you know, I can move between these two most of the time, and then occasionally, you know, reference this other one and say, oh, yeah, I did this, and, you know, whatever, tick, tick a box, and do space MS, and, you know, put a little check in that box. Um, Space MS, um, space MS. I, I want that unticked, um, and so yeah. I mean, this I think is more than enough given my needs, and you know some of the other sort of more fancy features like uh, you know I've I've demonstrated this in other videos, but say this like backslash T. So I've defined this symbol. You know, it's basically just a calligraphy. You know, T. Um, say I want to define a new symbol, so I can do G. Um, oops, that was a GF, GD, and so it'll take me to that um, to that definition, and then you know whatever I can do YY and yank that line and P for print new line and you know do percent sign and you know go and you know whatever edit edit this uh, you know make make a new symbol here. Um, I don't know whatever it is. I want to replace this with uh, I don't know what I've, you know M or and so I right, I have an M already, but anyways. You get the point. Um, and then if I want to go back to where I was, I can do Control O and hops me right back. So it's like those are useful, you know, that sort of like definition linking. That's useful in this document itself. But rem remember, this is the document I actually want to remember. And so it makes sense to kind of have some kind of linking features and so on, which, you know, this does it by itself. It's just whenever you define a symbol, you can use GD to then, whenever you use that symbol, just go to wherever its definition is. So um, and similarly for labels, um, you can, you know, label things and then you can reference them and it'll insert the number of, of you know, if you have like a numbered list um, and so on. So, um, and same for sections, you can reference sections and, you know, and, and those create hyperlinks inside your paper, you know, so you can have, but that's nice. It's nice to sort of invest, you know, in the paper itself, even if it's something as simple as, you know, just turning on hyperlinking. So when you click on references, it takes you, you know, to, to that link. Um, but um, but yeah, what I don't need are very very fancy notes, which I'm not going to care about in you know hopefully even a few months time. So so that is um, that's what I have to say about the the workflow that I'm using for for writing academic papers and you know managing other tasks. And um, yeah, hopefully it makes you know just having a collection of markdown documents um, in a in a project like this one this this um, to do project. Here for my different work workflows, that this exhausts whatever needs might be met by a program like Obsidian or Rome. Um, and I would not make the same claim for Notion. If you are running a business, it is good tr to track expenses, to have you know calendar support and all kinds of things like that. And um, and that's really not what I'm trying to do here with with them. And so, you know, if you do need those things, it may be worth you know starting Notion to you know run a small business and and so on. Um, but you know, it is wading through a lot of admin potentially, um, and if you're going to gain from that, fine. But um, I think for writing a paper, it's it's just clutter.